Okay, uh, what I will do now is discuss one very important topic that is the uh, the fault impedance, okay? Uh, if, if you attend to my classes of power system analysis, and um, you must remember that for asymmetrical and asymmetrical faults, uh, sometimes we include what we call the, uh, the fault impedance, okay? But in real life, that is not what, what is, is, is something very interesting, okay? Because for many years, uh, electrical engineers has been studying the, the, the faults, especially when there is an arc. Because the arc is the element that is including this impedance at the fault uh, path. Okay? However, those historical studies for many years has concluded, or, or well, it's, it's conclude, okay? It's not concluded, but um, the theories say that the arc is mainly a resistant. It's mainly uh, resistive in nature, okay? And to be honest, many, many people and many books has been discussing and many papers has been discussing what is the value of the resistance of uh, arc okay and to be honest one of the well-known equations to define the arc resistance is the warrington equation okay warrington he run a practical uh, test many practical tests and he found a, a, a he defined an equation okay the the equation that he create uh, established that the initial arc resistance the initial arc resistance depend on the magnitude of the current moving through the arc and is proportional to the length of that arc. What Warrington say is they are basically the arc is not static, the arc is changing. And to be honest, in real life, the arc is something that is very complicated, but we simplify the studies for, uh, for sake of practicality, okay? The arc resistant, uh, Warrington found that the initial value followed this, this equation over there. But then, when the arc, when the arc is established, then the wind speed direction and also the length of the arc start to change. And they, they have an impact on the resistance uh, of that arc. And then he established the second equation that is for uh, a period after the initial moments. And he said that the arc depend of the spark over distance, that is S, and depend of the wind velocity and the time in seconds. And in the denominator, he include the arc current, okay? There are many other papers, there are many other books. For instance, here on the right hand side, you can find one of the empirical formulas that is used by the industry in the United States, and that is based on the Westinghouse Relay book. The Westinghouse Relay book say that the arc resistance depends again on the length of the arc. <coughs> and it's related with the current that is moving through the arc, okay? And finally, also there are another equation over here, and you will find this equation in the Hollowitz book, and this is a simplified equation that say that depend of the square value of the nominal voltage and is inversely proportional to the short circuit current, okay? There are few equations, there are more equations to calculate the arc uh, resistance. I will not go in detail over there because that is not my main problem. My main problem is that we are, we are studying um, 
uh, distance protection and what is the problem when we have an arc in the distance protection. Well, when we have an arc in the distance protection, the thing is that we are adding resistance. And because we are adding this resistance, uh, the apparent impedance that the relay is looking or the relay sees is modified. Considering the arc resistance has an impact on the fault characteristic. And what it's doing mainly is to modify from a straight line that we have when we have a very clear voltage short circuit and that red line over here is the line coming from the transmission line impedance but then if we have an arc resistance we have here the horizontal arrow black arrow over there and then we will have here some arrow at the top modifying the characteristic um, what is happening what is happening now is that uh, it's modifying the impedance that the relay see and that can create problems and what kind of problems can be created over here well the problem is that we will have the arc resistant and the arc resistant will create some a contribution mainly contribution because will allow current from the other possible infits to go to ground okay um let me tell you let me show you here imagine that we have from the right hand side we have a source that is providing some short circuit contribution and then we have a terminal on the right hand side that we can say that is coming from another big power system and there is a current contribution over there that we can call i remote okay what is happening there what is happening there is if we have if we have a bolted short circuit this impedance is zero as a consequence the voltage here in this point is zero and the current that the relay C, the current that the relay C, it will be only the current dividing this voltage source plus the sum of those impedance. However, if we have a arc resistance, if we have an arc resistance, the full current will move through this arc. And that is affecting that is affecting the voltage across the terminals of this relay. What I'm trying to say is that right now, when we have a fault and there is an arc, we can use Kirchhoff voltage law to identify the voltage across the relay. And using Kirchhoff voltage law, that that voltage will be the voltage drop across the line impedance and then plus the arc impedance and the sum of the contribution coming from the boost bar a that is the current that the relay sees plus the remote contribution coming from boost bar b and what is the problem the problem is that when we calculate the ratio between the voltage at the relay location and the current at the relay location, that, that ratio, that ratio is different to what supposed to be. Because in theory, if we have a voltage short circuit, we get the proper impedance of the transmission line but right now because we have because we have this full impedance now we have this full terminal this term over there and that term is modifying the impedance that the relay is able to identify what i'm trying to say is that the full resistance is affecting the apparent and the, the impedance that the relay C and that impedance received their name apparent impedance okay okay what you need to do uh, what you need to understand is that the arc impedance 
it cannot necessarily be a pure resistance. And if that is not a pure resistance, well, it's a pure resistance, but the current contribution that is coming through can modify the direction of the apparent impedance. And we can have different directions. We can have different direction for that uh, disturbance here at the uh, RX diagram, okay? What I suggest is uh, that my students have a reading on the IEEE standard C3713 because over there, there is a very good discussion about what is the main impact of having the fault um, default uh, impedance. Um, it's, it's good that having a reading to the section 6.72 that define the influence of the load and fall resistance at the distance relay. Okay, again, this is the C3713. Okay. Okay, now let's do the following. Let's run a numerical example. In this case, we have a 765 kV transmission line. You can see over there, we have the 765 transmission line and there are some data over there. The impedance of this transmission line is 7 plus 50J. Let me use my pointer here to show you. Is here 5 plus 50J and there is an arc, okay? And the arc here, and this condition, the arc is 7.5 ohms, okay? It's look very small, but let's see what will happen, okay? And during the fault, we know that the resistance is 7.5 ohms here. This is the arc resistance. And there is a current contribution coming from A, and a remote contribution coming from B, okay? We are assuming that this line have multiple infits and here, uh, this is the current 320 minus 87 amps. That is the current coming from the source. And on the other side, on the other side, we have uh, 725 minus 90, okay? And that is the remote contribution, okay? Now, the question is, what is the apparent impedance that this, uh, this uh, distant relay can see? Well, to be honest, it's extremely simple. This problem is extremely simple to solve because what we need to do is, okay, the relay must, if, if there is no arc, the relay must be able to identify the line impedance, okay? But because we have this, arc we have some problems because the arc is contributing with an additional term and that term is mainly coming from the fat of the remote contribution okay what we need to do right now is uh, including the 7.5 ohms and including the ratio between the remote and the local current and what is the important result and important conclusion over here? I don't know if you realize, but if the relay is working properly and there is a bolted fall, the relay must be able to detect this. But because we have a fault impedance, because we have a fault impedance, this term is added and as a consequence, you can see here that now we have a very big, a very big, uh, very big impedance compared with this. What is the main conclusion? That if we use this value for setting the distant relay, the re distant relay will not be able to see this fall because the arc impedance is making so big that uh, the, the, the apparent impedance that the relay will not be able to identify and to see this fault. Okay?